All right, welcome back everybody. So this week is an experiment in mechanical bonds versus um, a deglosser, which you can see I have over there. So what I did was I took a panel and this side has a solvent-based conversion varnish on it and this side is a UV um, coating. And so what I've done is I've sanded with various grits with a surf prep sander, the three by four, 120, 150, 180, 220 and then a deglosser okay um, and we're gonna see what kind of adhesion we get now I'm gonna shoot a vinyl sealer because that's what I shoot but if you use um, cover stain or shellac the shellac will be similar to the adhesion of the vinyl sealer the um, cover stain has better adhesion than both of those but is more brittle so we're gonna take a look at this and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna shoot both sides and we'll come back and we'll do an adhesion check and we're gonna put the debate to rest on how much sanding is required. All right, before we get into the video, I wanna mention a couple things though, um, is that I wanna see if there's a difference because the UV it has a glossier finish on, on it than the conversion varnish. And generally speaking, um, flat finishes tend to be less durable than higher gloss finishes. Um, and Shane Woods gave a really good explanation of this. It's the molecules are tighter together on a gloss finish than they are on a flat finish. So if you're refinishing a gloss finish, um, me personally, I actually go down to an 80 grit and go up and obviously that would cost more to the customer um, but it's just the reality of what we do and experience has taught me that um, on those finishes you got to make sure that you get the shine off or you're gonna have adhesion issues I don't care you know no matter what you use <clears throat> so anyway so what we got here is the 120, 150, 180, 220, and the deglosser. So we're just going to do an adhesion test on all of these and see where they stack up and to see how much sanding um, actually needs to get done. Now I will also tell you that this is on a flat surface, so you're going to get way better results um, on a flat surface than you are on curved surfaces and profiles. So you always want to sand those. Uh, more I uh, kind of over sand you know your edges and things than you would on your flat surfaces because your sander is going to be able to pick up um, easier on these flat surfaces than they would on the curved surfaces all right so let's get into so this the test. is with a 120 scratch okay so if we look at the tape we pretty much got zero pull so our adhesion is excellent on that one I'm gonna leave that one there and then okay so now we're gonna do our 150 with our 150 we have a slight bit of pull actually that's just pulling up from the plywood so I'm gonna say that that is excellent adhesion on a 150 scratch all right let's look at a 180 scratch The 180 scratch, we're good there as well. Let's look at the 220 scratch. Okay, now this is where it gets a little interesting. So with the 220 scratch, you can start to see that we're peeling up that surface on all of that. You see all that green in there? That is where we're losing adhesion, all right? Now let's look at the deglosser. Okay, same thing there. It's a lot worse than the other one. You can see all that uh, green um, that's come off on that with the deglosser. Okay, so again, we got okay adhesion, but it's still not as good. Now, let's go back and look at a scratch test on each one of these going from 120 up to the deglosser. Our scratch test on the 120, 
Oh, really good. So we're almost just kind of dent the wood there. All right, let's look at it at 150. Same thing there. So 180. Very good there. I'm surprised. I figured that we might get a little bit more coming off that. So let's look at the 220. Um, actually, that's pretty good with the 220. I'm surprised. And let's look at the final, the deglossed version. Okay, so on the deglosser, you can see that it's it's just not nearly as good as what you're going to get with um, a mechanical um, bite to it. So, okay, so now we flipped it over to the UV side. Now, you can already see that our scratches um, are producing more pull already because it's a much glossier surface. So I would expect us to have less adhesion on this than we did on the flat conversion varnish. But we're gonna test, don't guess, and find out. So 120. Okay. So what I would expect, all right, so we're getting a little bit of pull on there even at the 120 level. Now some of this is uh, plywood pull, but you can see if I get the angle right, some of the green in there, okay? All right, let's move it down to the 150. All right, a little bit worse, you can see. All right, now let's move it down to 180. All right, about the same as the 150. 220. That one's actually about the same as the 180, which is kind of interesting. And then let's look at the deglosser here. And there's your deglosser. So interestingly enough, on this one, it was relatively the same um, on most of those. Um, Definitely could tell a difference as you're getting up higher again. So let's go back and let's look at the uh, mar resistance over the glossier surface. All right, automatically there we can tell a difference um, in that 120 scratch. Um, let's take a look at the 150. All right, about the same as the 120. Now let's look at the 180. Roughly the same there as the 150, the 220. Um, that one's hard to say. I'm gonna say it's a little less worse than the 180. You're still pretty good. And then let's look at the deglosser here. And obviously that one produced the worst outcome of all of them there. So it seems like between 150 and 180 looks like the sweet spot. But let me give you my final thoughts. All right, so what's my final thoughts? Well, I think this is a good reminder to all of us um, that how important mechanical bond is. now. I should have done one without sanding, but I've done that in some other videos, and you can see some products do better than others without sanding. But the truth is, you're always gonna get a better bond with a mechanical scratch or if you're going into bare wood. Um, I was a little surprised that the deglosser did as well as it did, but if you look at that over time, um, you know, it's just not gonna hold up to the abuse that getting a your mechanical scratch in it. So what I tend to do is the glossier the surface, I'll go down in grits because it doesn't load up as easy. So that's that's kind of a trick um, and a good thing to know. So for instance, if I'm doing a glossier 
uh, maybe even a semi-gloss um, oak door, I'll go down to 80 and sand up to 120 or 150 to get to a lot till I get it deglossed and usually by that time I'm pretty much down to to bare wood which is always better um, than having a pre-finished surface so it's just a fact because you're you know that finish is soaking down into the pores and it's becoming one with the wood I guess so to speak um, now on a maple or a more closed grain structure wood um, you know you can't leave like a 120 scratch it'll show through um, but like on an oak you can so you might have to go on up and it just depends on the finish that I'm using as to how high I've got to go up and the surface and all that generally with maple it tends to like a 150 180 on a refinish I kind of tend more to 180 um, so I don't see those scratches so I might start at 120 and then you know work up to a 180 or I might start with a 150 it just depends on how thick the coating is on it you know I've had some that I hit it with 150 and I'm down to bare wood um, and so those are the things that you need to look for as you um, are pricing jobs you know the higher the gloss value the more it automatically costs for me because I know I got more prep work and then you have to do the math and determine whether or not based on their budget um, how that's going to work or even if you want to take the job um, all right so I've seen a lot of guys and gals out there using the surf prep sanders to prep your work um, now one of the things I've seen is I've seen people using the foam back abrasives um, that are generally designed for um, you know sanding finishes okay like scuff sanding which is a little bit different than what we're doing here um, and I see a lot of people just kind of burnishing and not really getting still a good mechanical scratch um, so what I would recommend is getting the interface pads and their actual sandpaper disc um, and I would recommend a film disc now what's the difference between the paper and the film now we're going to talk about that and I'm going to show that in another video however just quickly talking about it the um, film backed is a lot tougher okay it's going to take more abuse than the paper back um, and the reason you want that is because you know you're sanding these finishes hitting all these corners you're, you're taking the paper through a lot more abuse than you would on a white wood situation and anytime you get a rip tear build up on this paper it starts rendering the paper useless you've all seen that you get a bunch of clogs on it and it's no good so my suggestion is is to get the interface pads they make these in three different sizes and softnesses I keep you know three or four of them on hand um, all the time and when you're sanding those profiles use the actual paper now I will caution you that you can obliterate a profile by doing this so make sure you test before you go hog wild with this stuff but my edges and everything I'm gonna do this um, and ease my edges too you know because when you're sanding you get all those hard edges and sharp edges and the finish is not going to roll around a sharp edge it's going to go up to it and stop so keep that in mind all right so i hope you liked the video make sure you like and subscribe uh, follow me on instagram and facebook at eric reason remember test don't guess we'll catch you next week